Welcome to D-Labs Tube Amp Theta. In this episode, we are going to revisit the Hammond A044 amplifiers and how to modify them. This is a revision to my original design, and now it's going to go in a cool Regency police radio cabinet. So the project of the day, we are going to modify a Hammond A044 amplifier to be housed in a Regency receiver cabinet. So this used to be a Regency police radio. To get the chassis to fit into this cabinet, the first step is to mill the front. If you get one of these AO44s, you'll see that there used to be a big oval here and other cutouts for its past life. Well, that won't work in the Regency. You have to actually mill a step out of the chassis to clear that bottom lip. So when you take your chassis now, slide him in, it will butt right up to the front like it should. So you'll see you already have some cutouts for controls. And what we're going to do with this model, we'll have input, the tone, volume, and this would be for a lamp. The power switch is either going to be integrated into one of these pots or to be on the rear of the amp. So if we take a closer look at the chassis, you'll see why we can't put the power switch here. It's because our rectifier tube socket is right there and next to it would be our new filter capacitor. The old filter cap was bad, so I'm replacing it with one of these nice CE distribution types that you can buy from AmplifyParts.com. So this is a dual 32 microfarad at 500 volt cap. He'll sit right there with a bracket. So the other issue now, you see we've already got her stripped out. The other issue is this thing used to run a pair of ECL 86 tubes okay and that's all there was on this chassis but if we're going to convert it into a little push-pull amp we need to add an inverter tube and of course a preamp tube so in this case I'm going to add a 12AX7 and a 6AV6 as the inverter at the end of this video I'll give you guys the schematic so you can easily modify your AO44 so I'm not going to show all the details of drilling these holes and mounting the parts, okay? I'll get to that point. I'll show you our new underside wiring when it's complete, and then we'll get it fitted into the cabinet. This is a great little project. Here's an update on the AO44 retrofit project. I've got my 12AX7 and 6AV6 sockets installed, and they're going to drive a pair of EL84s. Also installed a new front aluminum panel. Input, this is our volume, and this is tone, and it has the power switch on it. Filter cap is installed. Getting ready to wire the bottom side. Let me show you the fit in the cabinet. Remember, I needed this gap to clear the lip on the front panel. So there is our rough fit. Okay, so your input jack, volume, tone, and this will be a lamp. So I have a lens that will go here. There will be an incandescent lamp, and the light will come through the hole and illuminate it. It's looking good. All right, the little Hammond AO44 retrofit amp project is complete. This chassis started out as an AO44 with only three tubes. had an EZ81 rectifier which it still does, but the output tubes were a pair of ECL 86's. Those are now a pair of 6BQ5's or EL 84's. Preamp tube is a 12AX7. The inverter is a 6AV6. Power transformer and output transformer are stock and I installed a new filter cap. Alright, now for the good stuff. Let's go underneath. Right, here's our little bottom side walkthrough of the AO4 modification. This is Rev1. I did this same thing about two years ago and it only featured a single volume control pot and I also did not modify the chassis to go into a cabinet. 
So that is the difference on this new build. So here is our input jack. The 68K resistor goes direct to pin 2 of the 12AX7. You can see I've landed a terminal board here to distribute the preamp power between the 12AX7 and the 6AV6. Then we swing over here through these 2.047 coupling caps and they are going to the 6BQ5s. I had to rewire these tube sockets to accommodate the new tubes. So if you're getting ready to do this retrofit, pay attention to the pinout or you're going to smoke your new amp. The other addition to this amp is the tone control. Alright, let's take a look at our power supply section. I added a line cord and a fuse, of course. Original power transformer, original rectifier tube. What you see here in the heat shrink, there is a resistor and a diode to support this high intensity white LED and that illuminates the front panel lamp assembly. Here's the bottom of our new filter cap. Have a 10K resistor feeding the screens of the 6BQ5s. And this 10K resistor with another capacitor feeds the preamp section. All right, we'll cut to the schematic now. So this is very close to my original AO44 mod schematic that I did two years ago. The only addition is the tone control pot and now a new filter capacitor. The old one referenced the original can style cap that was on that chassis. When this amp showed up, that cap was gone and I would have replaced it anyway. If you want a copy of this schematic, just email me. I'll send it right out so that you can modify your own Hammond AO44. All right, here is the final build of the Hammond installed in the Regency cabinet. Input jack here, there's their volume and tone, and a beautiful orange spiral lens that I found in my archives of vintage goodies. Let's take a look around the back. Here's the back side of the amplifier. Got our speaker output jack. You can see our new pair of 6BQ5 tubes. The chassis fits in there really nice with some clips. Screws come in from the bottom, just like it was made for it. Take that, Dr. Z. <laughs> 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 